Hi, Steve. Thank you for taking a few minutes to talk to us today. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I appreciate it. Why is IP optical integration strategically important to operators? Well, there's a number of reasons. I'd say the first reason is that bandwidth demands continue to grow at a very high pace, um, often as high as 40, 50 percent for many operators. Dealing with that bandwidth growth is fundamentally the job of the IP and optical network. Uh, so bringing them together and controlling them together really helps to deal with uh, capacity growth. Uh, the second big reason is that what we're seeing is that the type of traffic and the, the way traffic traverses the network is changing over time. It's becoming less predictable. You know, we used to drive most of the traffic from things like video, very predictable. It's kind of coming from the cloud to the end users. We're now starting to see many more devices being connected with 5G. We're starting to see a lot of sensors that are driving traffic into the network. And this ends up in a very diverse traffic patterns that are hard to predict and very difficult to manage. So once again, understanding what's happening at both layers helps to manage that type of traffic. And the third reason is that we're starting to see technologies that will enable the IP and optical layers to converge more succinctly in a given platform. You know, traditionally, optical transport, particularly coherent, uh, would require so much space and power that it would not fit uh, seamlessly into a router. With new technologies like 400ZR, uh, we're starting to see pluggable modules that will emerge in the next few years that for certain, uh, I'd say, point-to-point -point optical applications of coherent, we can start to see that being integrated more directly into the routing systems themselves. And what is stopping the industry from wide-scale adoption? Well, the biggest challenge that we've had is uh, trying to get the optical layer and the IP layer to communicate with one another. Uh, for quite some time, we've had a very dynamic optical layer doing wave leg switching, uh, connectionless, contentionless, directionless switching. Uh, we've had a very dynamic IP layer that can manage traffic uh, with dynamic routing protocols, control paths through the network, but they use slightly different protocols and the attempts we've made to try to get them to communicate just haven't really worked out. The constraints are different, the way the protocols are, are implemented is different, and so we haven't been able to get those two layers to come together. And how is IP optical networking integration 2.0 going to solve these issues? Well, we're taking advantage of some new software tools that we've been developing over the last few years. Instead of trying to integrate the, these two layers in the network using the control protocols in the network, we're doing that now with an SDN layer. So we're building software that rides above the network, that runs in servers, that can communicate both to the IP network as well as the optical network, understand the topologies, understand the constraints, understand where traffic is flowing, and tie them together. And then once we've done that, we can start to really get very efficient use of both the IP layer and the optical layer, uh, more efficient resiliency schemes, and the end result is it's much more cost effective, is better equipped to scale, is better equipped to enable very dynamic services. Great, well thanks so much for taking some time to talk to us. Well thank you again, I appreciate the opportunity. Okay, bye now. Bye.